scum frogs, and shallow largemouth bass. This is one of my favorite combinations. I'm on Gloucester Pool by Georgian Bay. It's a cloudy, rainy, mid-August day, and I'm fishing for hard-hitting largemouth bass on topwater scum frogs. This is a simple and fun way to catch trophy largemouth bass. On an overcast day, head shallow. Find surface vegetation like lily pads, wild rice, or bulrushes and cast these weedless lures right in and around the vegetation. The cloud cover will pull the big bass out of the really thick stuff and make it easier to catch them. These baits are pretty simple to work. Basically just get them out there in the thickest cover you can find and just make them splash around and make some noise. It seems most of your hits come on the paws. So I'll pull it, and make them splash around a bit, pause it, they hit on the paws. Oh no. Just got blown up on in there. Missed him on the hook set. Sounded like a good fish and it looked like a decent hit. Let's see if he's gonna hit this again. Buddy. Ah, nice little large one. That's what we're going for. Slam him up here. That two pounder, he wanted it too. Did you see that hit? Hit it twice actually. Oh, and just engulfed it. Look at this. He wanted that scum frog. This might take a few seconds. Look at it. There we go. Nice fish. Take them any day, especially when they hit hard like that. It's really important when using these uh, scum frogs or any type of topwater bait really to watch your bait the entire time. Uh, it's when you're least expecting it that fish hits and if you're not watching it, if you're not ready, you're going to miss them. So whenever you're throwing topwater baits, stare at your lure. Doesn't matter what's going on around you, just keep watching that bait. Change up your color every now and then too. I'm using a black one with brown legs, but I'll use white ones sometimes or green. Um, each day it seems like a different color works. Today the black's been working really well. As a rule of thumb, I like to use a dark color lure on dark days and a bright one on bright days. But it depends what lake you're fishing and what the fish are doing, really. We're faced with perfect conditions today. It's nice and overcast. We've been getting wet a few times, but for the most part, it's staying just overcast. And that's really everything you need for these scum frogs. It's really important when you get a hit in this, you're going to get a big splash. The bass are going to hit it hard. Even though you're excited, you have to wait two seconds before you set the hook. What that does, it allows the bass to have, you know, be turning back down. He'll hit it, he'll put his head down. and You've got to wait until at least he has his head going down away from you. So it's hard to do when you're excited and you see that big hit. But you get the hit, wait one, two, boom, and slam the hook center on as hard as you can, essentially. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Right in the lily pads. Up here. Gotta keep your head. Oh, oh, that's a chunky fish. That's what we're looking for. Wow, he's actually really big. That's close to four pounds, I think. On the big foot. Oh, there you go. That is what these big frogs produce. Beautiful largemouth bass like that. That's a chunky fish. He's definitely over three pounds. Oh, I'm going to let him go back where he was. He's, he's been caught before. There's a hole in the uh, bottom of his jaw there. Someone's caught him, so that shows you catch and release works. Nice. Whoa, ready to go back. Nice. Yeah, all I did there was I threw this. Uh, this is a scum frog Bigfoot. I'm just throwing it around lily pads and around anything I can, any shallow structure I can find and these tails are just kicking in the back and uh, on these cloudy mornings like this, large will just love it. It's a really good way to get some real big active fish and they hit it hard and it's good action. The equipment I've been using today is also really heavy. This is a seven and a half foot heavy action flipping rod with a very powerful Okuma V-System reel. I'm using 50 pound test braided line. Uh, the reason I'm using this heavy equipment is just because you got to pull those bass out of this thick stuff quickly. You've probably seen some of the ones I've caught today, you pretty much skip them across the water. If you let their heads go down, 
into the lily pads or into the bull rushes, whatever you're fishing, you have a very good chance of losing them. So the heavier the equipment is, the more power you can pull into them, you can get their heads out of the water. Oh, just had a boil there. Okay, I'm gonna throw my uh, my one-two punch out. Just had a nice boil, seems like a nice bass. Right in these pads. Simply a uh, tube jig, I'm just kind of jigging it down there. It's got a weight in the front of it, so it falls down. If the bass misses the original hit, this is a really good way to get them to come back and hit again. It kind of goes down to their level, doesn't make them commit too much to it. The top loader bait's a pretty, pretty uh, hard bait to commit to sometimes for these fish. So they'll commit once, and if you miss them, sometimes they won't do it again, so I throw this follow up bait. I don't know how big it is. It's jeez. That's why I need heavy equipment. Come on. Oh, yeah, there he is. There's a bass in there. Oh, jeez. They can't fight when they have all these lily pads on their head. Oh, nice. Well, there's the one-two punch for you. As you can see, he was right in those lily pads, and he actually wrapped me around them. But since I had this heavy equipment. I was able to pull them out, and that's a quality two and a half pound largemouth right there on the tube jig rig Texas style. So let's let him go. Whew. Yeah, well that, that uh, proves to you that you do need heavy equipment sometimes. I put all my weight into that and I can still barely pull them out of that. But anytime I'm in a tournament, no matter what bait I'm using, it can be a spinner bait, a top water, a buzz bait, anything. If whatever I'm using, if it's a relatively fast retrieve, I'll always have some sort of follow-up bait rigged up sitting beside me. It might maybe a um, a weightless stick worm like a venom salty sling or a tube jig or a flipping jig, something that you can throw in after you miss a fish. And it's put a lot of big fish in my boat that's helped me out in tournaments many times. <laughs> 